Our dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. It's opportunity to gather before your word and look at the fabric of Christianity and the internal piece of this and referring to the correction and reproof in today's lesson. I pray, Lord, that this lesson be taught in a manner that will be effective for all those that are here, to include myself. It's a very important lesson to learn and understand and hold to. As these things in the name of Jesus. Amen. Greetings and welcome to Amos Seed and Feed. Today we're going to begin the section on correction and reproof, which is a very important piece of the internal. Last time we met, we actually discussed instruction and righteousness. And this is a continuation of that thought process when we look at reproof and we look at correction. And, but before we begin, we want to look at a recap. Where have we been and how did we get to where we are today, right now? And in this recap, we're going to go back to the very beginning. We began with Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. If you remember, the Greek definition that we had was what is right, the act of doing what is in agreement with God's standards, and the state of being in proper relationship with God. So this is ultimately our, ultimately our goal. And as we noticed before in Romans 10 verses 9 and 10, the believing unto righteousness is an action. It's not just something that is stagnant and just sits there with no motion whatsoever. That's where we began, and it feeds right into what we're talking about now. And if you remember, our memory verse for this section is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And as we see right in the middle of this, we see the instruction in righteousness, we see the correction, and we see the reproof. And so all this is a part of Christian living. It all drives us to and gets us to the place and leads us to where we need to be in a proper relationship with our Lord. So as this lesson continues, we're going to begin with the term correction. What does that mean? But before we do, let's look at our memory verse for correction, which is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 11 and 12. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son, in whom he delighteth. So what is correction? Correction is Greek 1882, the Greek word 1882, and in correction, wisdom and teaching that imply correcting error and behavior, chastening, and what we can look at here with regards to the correction is we're a little bit off. We just need to be in a little bit of alignment. Have you ever assembled furniture and you have these pegs you gotta put in the hole? You gotta move it around a little bit and you gotta adjust it and you have to correct it just a little bit in order to get in that hole so that you can finish the process of building that furniture. And so it is with our Christian life. There is an effort to do what is right, but we may be just a little bit off, and we need a little bit of correcting to get into place where it needs to be in order for it to fully come together for us in our lives. Proverbs 15, verses 9 through 10. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way, and he that hateth reproof shall die. So this is actually bringing in the reproof as well as the correction. But let's begin at that first verse. Let's look at it again. The way of the wicked is an abomination unto the Lord, but he loveth him that followeth after righteousness. So this is a measure for us to look at. The wicked are an abomination to the Lord. In other words, they are not righteous. They are not in alignment with God the Father. But God loves those that follow after righteousness. Righteousness being striving to be in a proper relationship with God. 
So God does not appreciate the wicked. He does not accept wickedness. He only accepts those who strive to be in proper alignment with Him. And then we find correction is grievous unto Him that forsaketh the way. In other words, the wicked. The wicked forsaketh the way. So correction is very grievous unto them. And also that same person hateth reproof. And if he, and because he hateth reproof, he's never going to be in alignment with God the Father. Never going to be where he needs to be. And he's going to die. Not just a physical death. He's going to die the eternal death as well. Proverbs 22.15 Foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Foolishness. Foolishness is actually rejecting God. Foolishness is not believing who he is, not accepting who he is. And if it's bound up in a child, the rod of correction shall drive it far from him. Look at this child as us being the children of God. We are foolish if we do not adhere to the rod of correction. Correction is very important. Now, in the last lesson, we went over this rod quite a bit, and I actually explained and gave examples of what this is actually talking about. Because in this day and age, we're talk, talking about child abuse and everything else. But the reality is discipline is very important in people's lives. I actually heard a preacher one time who went to a prison, or actually he went to prisons all the time. He was a prison minister. And he started asking people, what thing, if you could change it, would you change in order to be not here. And then many of them would actually tear up and begin to say, I wished my mother and father, or mother or father, had loved me enough to discipline me. In other words, discipline is very important. Even in this day and age, even though this world is busy trying to drive it away as thinking that discipline has no place in our society. But even when I was in the military, the military used the rod of correction in that when I went to trade school or technical school, I had passed a test that showed what kind of amplitude I had and what kind of job I was capable of doing and where I could be successful. And it was in a technical field. And so they would actually hold it over our head as we're going through training. If you fail out, a certain number of times, you will no longer be in this program, and we will put you in program A or program B. And those were counted as inferior positions. They were counted as something that was reserved for those who did not have any aptitude or ability whatsoever. And so as a technician trying to learn my position in the Air Force, that was the rod of correction. I didn't want to go get, do one of those jobs, neither did anybody else. But the reality is, was that job actually like that? Those other jobs? I have no idea because I didn't hold it. They may have been just as technical as the one I had. But it was a rod that they held over our head, a rod of correction, to keep us on the path that we needed to be in order to be successful in our training and what we're going to do in the future as a military personnel. And so we find it here in this verse here, Proverbs twenty two fifteen, The foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, and erotic correction shall drive it far from him. Proverbs 3, verses 11 and 12. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son in whom he delighteth. Chastening of the Lord, he do not despise it. Because in this verse 12, God chasteneth and correcteth those that he loves. And if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior, he loves us and desires us to have a close relationship with him. And as we already discussed, that's what righteousness is. It is going to a place that we are in alignment with what he is in alignment with what He wants us to be, so our relationship with Him is correct and accurate. It only comes from being chastened. It only comes from 
having the correcting hand of our Lord to bring us to the place we need to be to be in alignment with Him. Let's move on to the word reproof. It is discipline for failure to comply. And a memory verse we have for this one here is found in Proverbs 15.32. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. So what is reproof? Greek word 16.50 is punishment, is correction, is chastised, being chastised. All of those things. The rod, the encouragement to go the right direction, the, the punishment for failure to do so. So as we talked about with correction, we may be just a little bit off. We may not be quite in the right place where we need to be. We just need a little bit of adjustment, correction, in order to get in the place we need to be. Reproof is a place to where if we have taken a full left turn and we're not anywhere near where we should be, where we should be. We are not doing what we are called to do. We are not abiding by the word, words of God's word. We are not doing those things that are right in his eyes. And so sometimes it requires reproof if we're not doing what is right. Like the example I gave in the last lesson where after church it seemed like I was on the back step of, uh, uh, most every Sunday evening. It's because I knew what the requirement was. I knew I was to be quiet. I knew I was to be good and not disturb the services whatsoever. And if I failed, there would be punishment. And so I was just blatantly not doing what was right. I was noisy. I was not in, a, in obedience to what my father had asked me to do. And so at the end of the services, I was reproved because I was not accepting the responsibility and doing what was right and what I was called to do. Proverbs 17 verse 10. A reproof entereth more into a wise man than a hundred stripes into a fool. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, according to another passage of scripture in Proverbs. And here we find that here. Reproof entereth into a wise man, someone who fears God. A hundred stripes on a fool, someone who rejects God, it's meaningless. It doesn't do anything for them. Because they're not having any desire whatsoever to be in line with God. Proverbs 29:15, The rod of reproof give wisdom, but the child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. The rod of reproof giveth wisdom. The rod of reproof helps us develop the fear of the Lord, which gives us, which gives us wisdom. But the child left to himself, someone who's not taught, someone who's not led in the right manner, bringeth his mother to shame. This is the same as what I just mentioned earlier in an example about the prison ministry. And those men who were in prison wished their parents, their mothers and fathers, had disciplined them so they would not be in the way they were. They became a shame to their parents, a shame to their mother, a shame to their father. Because they were not reproved. They were not corrected in the way that they should go. Proverbs 10.17 he is in the way of life that keepeth instruction, but he that refuseth reproof erreth. Here's a measure again. He that is in the way keepeth instruction. If you are striving to be in proper alignment with our Lord and Savior, we are going to keep his instruction. But he that refuseth reproof is, is, is an error. In other words, if you refuse the instruction, refuse the correction, refuse the reproof, you're not in the way. You're not even trying to be in the way. And that is a measure. Where are you? Are you trying to keep the instruction or rejecting it? If you reject it, you're not anywhere near where you need to be. Proverbs 15, 31 through 32. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. But he that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. Verse 32 is a verse that we've actually talked about in, one, in, in, in our lesson. And verse 31, I've added it to bring it into a larger understanding of what we're discussing here. 
Verse 31, the ear that heareth the reproof of life abideth among the wise. Who are the wise? Those that fear God. Those that fear God are wise. And they hear the reproof, and they are in the path of life. Now he that refuseth instruction despises his own soul. Why? Because he is not in the path of life. We're talking about not this life, the physical life. We're talking about the spiritual life. If we are not in life, we are dead. And our destination is the devil's hell. So the question is, where are we? What have we accepted? Because basically we can say here, yeah, the person that refuses the instruction, that he despises his own soul, has really not accepted Jesus Christ as Savior at all. So where do you stand? If you have not accepted Christ as Savior, go back to the beginning of these lessons. We had the plan of salvation. In that, this is how you get saved. This is how you move from a place of being dead and going to devil's hell and becoming alive in Christ Jesus, having life eternal with Him. In the very last part of verse 32, He that heareth reproof getteth understanding. If you hear the reproof, you get understanding, and what you're going to do is you're going to make the necessary changes to be where you need to be. That's what we're talking about here. Where do you stand today? Listen to these verses that we're talking about. We have the reproof. We have the correction. Are you listening to them? Are you trying to be in the place where you need to be? Listen to those. We hear them from the preachers and what they preach. We hear them from Sunday school teachers. And we hear them from the words found in God's word that we read. Abide by them. Hear them. Take action according to them. Proverbs 15.5 A fool despiseth his father's instruction. But he that regardeth reproof is prudent. There again, using the word fool. The fool being someone who does not really believe in God. He really doesn't. He may say he does. But the fool is going to reject God. He's going to reject who he is. And how does he do that? He despises the instruction that is given to him. And this is given on the physical realm. The fool despises his father's instruction. The father's trying to tell them, teach them how to grow and how to be the person they need to be in the physical. But God is doing the same thing with us in our lives. If we reject God, He is despising the directions and instructions of the Father, God the Father, which is accept His Son. And He will bring us into the fold. But then at the very last part of this, but he that regardeth reproof is prudent. Just the opposite. If he regardeth the reproof, in that we're in the wrong way and we need to make a change. And then we make that change. We are counted as prudent. Being someone who is smart. Someone who's made the right choice. So as we look at this, we've talked about instruction in righteousness, reproof, and correction. Not necessarily in that order. But we've learned a lot. We've heard that some of this is actually kind of, it sounds harsh. But it is all about Helping us be in the place we need to be. We are in the physical. We have sin that is dominant in our lives, no matter how hard we try to get it out. It is always there. And the only way that's going to help us is for someone to have someone as in the Lord to take us to the side and reprove us, to give us the instruction, to give us the corrections that we need in order to be in alignment. And this could be daily, it could be hourly, it could be every minute, it could be every second of our lives. We all know what we need to do. We all know what is expected as Christians in that we're reading God's Word, we're learning more about Him. Take those things and apply them to our lives. And what are we talking about? We're talking about the things we learn on the internal, where we actually, I'm sorry, on the personal, where we learned how to read and study and meditate on God's Word. Learning those things necessary, and now it's either going to correct us, it's going to give us instruction, and it's going to reprove us. What are we going to do with that? We're going to discuss that in the next lesson, talking about the doctrine, applying and wrapping this all up into a nice package so we fully understand it.
But before we go today, let's look at our memory verses again. The memory verse for this section of internal is 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And then, our verse for correction, Proverbs 3, 11 and 12. My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, neither be weary of his correction. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth, even as a father the son, in whom he delighteth. And then lastly, I remember verse for reproof, Proverbs 15, 32. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul, but he that heareth reproof getteth understanding. So that includes for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned as much as I have. And work to apply these things to your lives. Learn how to apply them to your lives. Again, going back to, don't forget to read. Don't forget to study. Don't forget to meditate on God's Word. And then take that information that you gathered and apply it to instruction to you, correction in the way that you're going, or reproving you if you're, if you're way off course. Think on these things. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next lesson. Take care.